To my mother, there are just two kinds of food. First, there's the food she prepares herself. Oh, I'm stuffed to the gills. I broiled a beautiful filet of sole, and I had some of my jello mold that was so yummy. Just made a tasty turkey roast sandwich. I steamed up some broccoli that was so tender, and I made a delicious squash casserole. And here's what she had to say about food prepared by others. They served corned beef that was so fatty. They served turkey that was too pink and raw. They served carrots that were drowning in butter and corn on the cob that got stuck in my denture. The mushroom soup was ugh. The liver tasted more like a pancreas. The meatball could choke a horse. The matzo ball could choke two horses and a goat. They gave us string beans that were hard as a rock. The most revolting candied yams and lox that was so salty I started to gag. Ooh, the muffin made me nauseous. The chow mein made me nauseous. The rice pudding made me nauseous. The layer cake made me nauseous. I ate the pumpkin pie and I thought I would throw up. Ugh. And their broccoli was so gassy, I was all fashtunkin. Excuse me. Hey, Mila, I just want to ask you a quick question. When you go out at night, do you wear any particular kind of brassiere? Because a lady here says she read that there was a girl who was just standing outside her house when all of a sudden there was some kind of shooting and apparently her life was saved because a bullet got lodged in her padded bra. So I'm thinking if you're going to be walking around the city late at night, it couldn't hurt to go over to Macy's lingerie department and buy yourself what basically amounts to a full true vest with built-in cleavage. All right, honey. Bye-bye. I live in a building that has a doorman in the lobby, and my apartment has three locks on the door and a peephole. To my mother, this is still not secure enough. Hi, Yamala. I was just thinking, when that fellow knocks at your door and says that it's David, how do you know it's really him and not some Shugana? So before you go letting him in, you ought to ask him to bend under the door and slide you a photo ID. Give me a call. Bye-bye. Through the years, my mother's dropped some pretty strong hints that she'd like me to meet someone from a you know, similar background. Hi, Amala. I don't know if you have any plans yet for Christmas Eve, but apparently I hear that all of the single Jewish guys in New York go to a big party that night called the matzo ball. Did you ever hear of such a thing? Sometimes her rationales are a little far-fetched. A home where there's a mixed marriage is not necessarily all hunky-dory, because when the holidays come, the candles on the menorah could ignite the Christmas tree. Now, I sometimes wonder, what would happen if my mother thought I was serious with someone who wasn't Jewish? So I tried an experiment, and one day, when she dialed my number, she heard... Hi, this is Amy. And this is Jamal. We, we can't, can't come, come to, to the, the phone, phone right now, now but leave, leave a, a message, message after, after the, the tone. tone. Holla back. Hello? Hello? Amy, are you there? Hello? Amy? I think you have a crosswire because your message is playing over the outgoing message from some other line. There's a male voice that's overlapping, and it sounds like you're doing a duet. If you can hear me, call 611 Repair and have them straighten it out ASAP. Then, like two seconds later, she calls again. Yeah, 
Yeah. This message is for Jamal. If you can hear this, please call your repair service ASAP because your outgoing message is coming over my daughter's machine. So anyone calling you will also hear the message from someone named Amy. Thank you. Hi, Amela. I hope you made it to the airport with everything intact. You know I'm not thrilled with you carrying your keys and wallets and your plane ticket behind you in a backpack where anyone can reach in and take it. If women were meant to carry valuables behind them, then how come no woman ever spent nine months carrying a baby in her tuchus? All right? I'm hoping you'll come to your senses and at least buy a tote bag. Okay, Mama Shane, so let me hear from you. Hi, Amala. I don't know if you saw 60 Minutes, but they did a report that said the electric eyes on the elevated doors have a very high rate of malfunctioning. So don't go putting your hand in the door just as it's going to close, or you'll end up with a sticker for handicapped parking. All right, sweetie, I'll talk to you later. Mom, are you listening? I love you. Bye. <laughs>